we've, we've seen a lot of your personality get come out in the press conferences. In the I have one, you know. Hmm? I do have one. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you were not. I wasn't implying in any way you were boring, I promise you. Um, oh, I've got a minute. <laughs> I never mentioned boring. I know, uh, fair enough. Um, but is your it's not really fair enough. <laughs> <laughs>
show you the boss? Well, it's difficult for me to comment because I don't know the actual context. I don't know what's really happened. I don't want to go off headlines and things like that. So, um, yeah, part of the job is to take some decisions that that are difficult, but that's normal. Just want to, Dennis Zakaria. Where, where does he fit into your your plans? Is it going to take time, or why why hasn't he really featured yet? Well, we've got a squad of twenty four players. We've used quite a lot. Um, in that position, there's quite a few also good players, so he's had to be a little bit patient. But he's competing, he's fighting for his place, and he's ready to help the team if he needs. Um, whichever, no matter how the season goes, there's always going to be a question about an individual because you can't literally play everybody. So he's just been a little bit unfortunate, he's done nothing wrong, but um, at the moment he hasn't had the game time that I'm sure he would like. Uh, but he's 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 acting well in training and he's ready to help. Moose talks sport. Uh, Greg, can you talk to us about the conversations you've had with Rhys James and Ngolo Kante, maybe about the disappointments not only of not playing for Chelsea in the next couple of months, but actually missing out on the World Cup? Because for both of them, the news this week would have been devastating. And I suppose as a club manager, you've got to think first of all about your team, but then you've also got to think about the individuals. Yeah, absolutely, and at least acknowledge the fact that they're human beings that want to be involved in that type of competition, absolutely. The reality is I haven't got anything to say that will make it any better for them, it's, and I think it's worth me acknowledging that. Um, it, it's one of those things, you just have to focus on the things that you can control, focus on your rehab, go day to day, uh, things get better, and then you just move forward. We spoke earlier in when you got to Chelsea about Angolo Kante and his contract being up at the end of the season and how many, how many games he misses and obviously he's through injury and he's missing a, a load more this season. Does this impact in any discussions you have about whether he'll be staying on at the end of the season? Well no, it's, uh, the most important thing for us and, and for me is that, it, that we help him get fit. Uh, that's the focus. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's got a long road ahead of him so we have to make sure that we get the right um, treatment, we help him get back fit and strong and then when he's enjoying his football we can we can think about those things then. The last one for me, we've, we've seen a lot of your personality that come out in the press conferences. In the I have one you know, <laughs> I do have one. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you were not, I wasn't implying in any way you were boring, I promise you. Um, oh, I know a minute, <laughs> I never mentioned boring. I know, uh, fair enough. Um, but is your, it's not really fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Is your team now playing with your personality? That's what I, was getting. I think six weeks is a quite short time to, to, to really get my true, wonderful personality onto a team. <laughs> uh, depends who you listen to and who you, which uh, media outlet you, you, you take opinion off. Um, no, I think it's uh, the personality is the personality of the players at the moment, absolutely, it's them. Um, they've uh, understood that there's a challenge to be had, they've taken it up, they've been brilliant, really honest, really responsible, really open, so the personality is all them, I, I've, you've got to wait for my boring one to, to emerge. Thank you. Thank you. Martin, Sky Sports. Hi Graham. Hi. Um, can I take you back a number of years and ask you to revisit the 20 minutes you played for Southampton against Manchester United? I'm sitting alongside Gary <laughs> Neville on, uh, on Saturday, tomorrow, and uh, he might have a view because he was... Uh, one of the defence that conceded six goals in that game. Um, yep. what, what are your personal memories of, of that cameo appearance? Well, that changed the game. I think it was turning towards <laughs> Manchester United and then all of a sudden I came on and it flipped yeah. towards us. I think, three goals I, think that was, I think that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. No, thankfully we didn't lose the game when I get on there. <laughs> that's the bigger worry for me. Um, it was just one of those days that you get at the Dell. Uh, I think if you speak to Gary, they'll know that historically they didn't really like the Dell that much. And they had a previous season it wasn't great with the shirt change shirts, I think yeah. so um, it was those games I think uh, <coughs> Matt Letizia was on fire Ayal Berkovic I think scored a really good goal it just one of those team performances it was fantastic uh, I think Roy Keane got sent off as well he did. He so that might have yeah, yeah well. well apologies for <laughs> mentioning that to Roy but it's not like him um, no so that of course contributed so it was a great day for us and not a good one for them just one on more recent times. When Conor Gallagher went off, did you feel that that changed your plans dramatically in the sense that you were taking up through illness a player who can score a goal mm. and bringing on a player whose goal record is 
not very good, shall we say, but many other qualities come to it. But did that change at, the, at that particular early moment and you, and you ended up not scoring in the game? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, um, the fourth, subs that substitution it means you, you can only make two now in terms of two stops, so it affected us a little bit. Um, but at the, same, at the same time, we probably needed a little bit of control in the game because Brentford, like, it's not easy to control and, and if you don't control it, then the ball's in your box quite quickly and easily. So um, that was just the, the, the decision at the time. Um, and obviously, Mateo's got this quality that he brings to the team. Okay, last question in the broadcast section. Nick, BA. Hi, um, Hi. Trevor Shallow is obviously in really great form and he's unbeaten when he starts for Chelsea. Um, how, how have you seen his development? And uh, you know, I think obviously a few people are starting to suggest he should be in the England pitches. Do you think that's, uh, uh, you know, think that's, that's merited? And uh, you know, how impressed have you been with him in the time that he's been? Very impressed. Very, um, from from day one, I have to say, because uh, he, he wasn't in the start um, for the first couple of games, but acted perfectly. Just trained really well and very professional, very determined. He's an impressive character, very focused on his football, wants to play, wants to help the team, wants Chelsea to win. So he's uh, great in that regard and he's a bit of a soldier. He's played in all the games and we're having some problems in terms of you know availability for players. But he's he stood stood up there and stood in for us and and he's performing a really.